So we've, we're pretty much done, unless we want to do word of the week. But well, I, th- I think we should try and cram it in. Come on. Come on, what's your, your hoovering situation? I'm just going to do this, but I can just get, wash these dishes if you need to have a quick chat. Yeah, another 10 minutes. I think we could do this, yeah, 10 minutes. Let's do it in 10. Yeah. Come on, then. <laughs> <laughs> if we do it, it's okay to crack on. Right, I'm just going to knock him on in the kitchen. Hold on. Sorry about that. <laughs> bless her. She's been with me for years. She's- oh, I have a cleaner that's been with me since 2008 as well. Marvellous. And she's just bought a house in Stupa, which I'll be able to oh, go and visit. <laughs> even better. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sun is rising. Feel the warmth of my face. There's a lot to do now. But there ain't no race. I sip my coffee. I'm feeling fine. No need to work yet. I'm gonna take my Welcome to Own It, Your Business and Your Life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. It's Nicola Cairncross and you're listening to Own It, Your Business and Your Life. And I'm joined by Judith Morgan, of course. And first of all, we're going to tell you all about what we've been up to this week. So my week's been extremely exciting. Um, first of all, Tony Robbins' new book has arrived called Master the Money Game, Seven Simple Steps to Financial Freedom. And as Judith and I both love money, <laughs> we love it. We love talking about it. We love thinking about how to make more of it. Um, as we worked together in the money gym for, for some years as well. I've been looking forward to this because I watched um, a video of my other hero, Frank Kern. Actually, Tony's Ro- Tony Robbins isn't a hero of mine, but Frank Kern is. And he did a really nice interview with Tony where I was really quite moved on several occasions. And it went on for about an hour or so. And it convinced me that I needed to order this book because um, Tony's gone out and he's interviewed top 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 people in the investment world not your not your usual names um and he's really got some great information out of all of them and uh, nicely enough because tony's got this really good story where he was actually at thanksgiving he and his family when he was very young were actually unable to eat they had no food at all and someone came along and paid for them to have a thanksgiving dinner and put some food in their cupboards for them and he's on a mission now to feed something like 100 million people And all of the proceeds from this book is going to the the foundation that does that, that that feeds hungry people. Um, So I was really quite, you know, impressed by the whole thing. And I'm looking forward to reading it. But it's arrived, Judith, and it's absolutely enormous and heavy. And the writing is tiny. (laughs) (laughs) I have seen it and I've downloaded the sample on Kindle, but I haven't got very far with it as yet. Yeah, no, it's well, it's all right. Actually, as, as I'm looking at it in broad daylight with my contact lenses in, the writing looks fine. But... I, I had a go last night in bed and I, I was remember thinking, oh, I wish this was on the Kindle so I could pinch it and make it bigger. Yeah, I think one of the things there that's some, something we might talk about in a future week is I also observed his fantastic marketing for that by getting interviewed by, you know, everybody's heroes so that we would yeah. all find out about it. Genius. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing that's happened is, you know, I did that thing for Andy Shaw last week, that, that webinar for him. I ran the yeah. tech for him. Yeah. Well, when I I went off to the Inspire thing, which I'll tell you about in a minute, on Friday, and uh, on Friday lunchtime, I'm sitting on the train reading the most amazing email he wrote for me. He's mailed, you know, as a thank you for doing that webinar, he mailed his list and recommended my Facebook ad services, which because I've been running his Facebook ads for him for the launch. And he wrote the most moving email. I was nearly in tears on the train reading all the lovely things he was saying about me. Oh, how nice. How nice. I saw one of your adverts for him on Facebook this week, actually. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, because if you've I got a little warm 
Hello. I thought, well, my friend did that. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's it's nice, isn't it, when you know someone's done something? <laughs> no, yes. I was really very moved because we've been friends for years and he's very, you know, we're very down to earth, you know, about each other and everything. But, and I sent him the copy for this mail out. He said, I'll do a mail out for you about your Facebook ads. And, uh, and I sent him the copy and he completely rewrote it from a very, very personal point of view. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that you put in a folder to read when you're not feeling so good because <laughs> it was so yeah. nice. And then, of course, I arrived at the Inspire um, event on Friday, and uh, it was just wonderful. The f first people, I mean, obviously, the first person that ran up, came up to me was Jackie herself. And um, then the second person was the lady who was looking after all the speakers. And, you know, there was such a, you know, you go into a sort of trance when you're speaking, you know, and you, you, you're concentrating sort of inwardly, if you like. And I didn't really catch anyone's names. And she was introducing me to loads of people and, and, you know, looking after me, taking my coat, feeding me, giving me a glass of water, et cetera, et cetera. And then, and then I was hugged enormously, largely by uh, Adrian Savage and Insa, for, who are Infusionsoft experts and clients of mine who I've worked with for three years in various capacities and I'd never actually met. So that was lovely because to meet them. Uh, the day yeah. went really, really well. I mean, you know, they got a fantastic turnout. It was very pink. I mean, really, everything was pink themed. It was beautiful. You'd have loved it. I um, would. The only, the only downside was that the clicker didn't work, but there was a really sweet boy on, on the sound, and he's, he basically, every time I put my hand up to click the clicker to move the slide on, he actually did it. But I was in such a funk because I couldn't make this clicker work. It kept jumping forward, so people were seeing my slides in advance, which really freaked me out a bit. But I was trying to, the show must go on sort of thing. But it was there was a very funny moment where, um, in fact, everyone complimented me on being really funny, and I wasn't actually trying to do it on purpose. <laughs> But every time he, uh, I put my hand up to click the clicker, he was he was doing it from the back of the room, and I I was like I stopped at one moment. I said, "This thing's moving itself forward now. It must be telepathy." <laughs> and everybody found that hilarious because they all realised he was doing it. It went very well. Everyone was very 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 sweet about my presentation. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, and um and I I connected with lots of lovely people who I hadn't seen for a long time. So it was a, a an enormously enjoyable day out. Well, there's nothing you like so much as showing off from the stage. Nick. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so how's your week been? Uh, it's been good, actually. Um, some some good, some bad. I'll start with the good. Um, interestingly, you, you touched on this briefly. You know, when you work at home alone, um, that's the way I like it, actually. I hardly ever go anywhere uh, or see anybody, and I like it like that. And it never feels alone to me because no. I'm connected you know, virtually, either through email or Facebook or by actually talking to clients with people all over the world all of the time. So I don't feel alone, interestingly, but uh, I was talking to a potential new client who I discovered lived very near me and we'd been introduced by a mutual friend. And I said, oh, at the end of our first session, we hadn't quite finished. So I said, why don't you come down and see me next time? Which actually oh. I don't know where it came from because I don't really want to see people. I work with them virtually over Skype. But anyway, she came around and she, uh, as she, we had a lovely time and as she was going home she said that the mutual friend had said oh Judith must really like you because she never has anybody round which was so funny that people know me so well you know and uh, so I don't know what I've let myself in for there because I my coaching isn't quite so good face to face no, I'm not I'm better, oh yeah I'm better listening to people but anyway we'll see um, and then what else happened this week? Oh, yes. And a bit of a bit of a uh, my computer started to go very slow in the mornings. And uh, I have a, a wonderful couple of chaps who look after me, Eric. Um, and they do this brilliant thing where they can fix your computer remotely via something called log me in or let me in or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but, but I lost the, yesterday. This was I was going to write my newsletter. This lovely day panned out. I had a long yellow stretch in my diary in the morning, which means I'm going to write the newsletter. A brief turquoisey stretch in the middle which means I'm coaching a client and then a grey one in the afternoon which means I'm blogging and I thought oh this is a nice easy day writing and one client but by the time you you know when your computer doesn't work and that's your main tool of the trade it's deeply frustrating isn't it so I lost the first I think when I eventually sat down to start writing my newsletter it's 12 15 and you know then you've got this sort of backed up stress haven't you it's, oh god I'm behind I'm not gonna you know I find computer glitches worse than anything but the miracle of the man being able to come in remotely across, you know, however it works, VoIP, I suppose, isn't it? It's all, you know, um, remote access and fix you is just, well, it's a joy. 
And uh, the third most exciting thing this week, well, actually it might be the first most exciting thing, is my, my clients, and they're a lovely bunch, they're in competition to come up with the best nickname for me. And you'll have probably read that in this week's newsletter, <laughs> but this week's, this week's nickname is She Who Takes No Prisoners, which I really like, actually. I'm certainly not going to bring that energy to every single coaching call, but I do love it especially as it came from a bloke. And so what he was saying, I think, was I really appreciate that you're quite firm with me. Yeah, that's right. And and that's, you know, really that's one of the things I think when it comes up in surveys all the time is people want a firm coach. And we're both very directional, aren't we? We're not one of those coaches who say, so what do you think? Well, we do say that. Well, but... <laughs> you know, I think, there's a, I think there's a risk, isn't there? Or, and I say what I think. If, you know, yeah. he, we're in collaboration and uh, if I don't agree with him, I let him know. And I think what he was saying was, you know, uh, she she let me get away with it in November, but she didn't let me get away with it in December. I suppose that's fair enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Brilliant. Anyway, she who, takes, she who takes no prisoners, that's my new name. Well, it's, it's not as good as my one for you, but there you go. I'll let him have it. <laughs> Right, Judith, what's fueled your fire this week then? So I'm going to tell you this week about my client, Sam, uh, who has inspired me. She uh, wanted to make a certain sum of money before she went to Australia for Christmas to visit her family. And uh, we talked about this in November and I gave her a genius idea and she improved it, quote unquote, and turned it into something bigger and more expensive and nobody bought it. And once she realised the error of her ways, she went back and made something small and affordable and got out of her comfort zone and offered it to everybody more times than she wanted to and all that kind of thing and has achieved some digital sales this week which she's really excited about and has turned her around uh what's what i really like about sam is how honest she is she'll say something like you know you gave me the right tip oh she's a fast action taker so i think we had the conversation on november the 7th and she'd changed her website by the 10th and was offering it by the 13th or something like that but she she realized she recognized that she'd heard the tip from me about what to create and she'd bundled it up and made it bigger and more expensive. And people weren't ready to spend, I don't know, 350 quid with her as their first purchase from her. So she she realized the error of her own ways and was very honest and, and changed, you know, confessed and changed tack quickly, created something else she already knew how to do, something that was affordable and offered it and started to take money. And I think it's really it's inspired our community that are, that are you know, my clients and it's inspired me and it's inspired her. And I think it's really just fabulous that people can be so prepared to be flexible, fast and change their minds. And I think what we what I've learned by it is you can offer things to the world and you don't really know what anybody will like until they'll buy it. But now, albeit doing it the wrong way around, funnily enough, she's ended up with, you know, um, an introductory priced offer and the next one up. So she's got two fabulous things to be marketing in her niche the minute she gets back from Australia and, uh, and a bit of spending money before she goes. Oh, that's absolutely marvellous. I love that. I love stories like that. Again, she took action not knowing yeah. what the outcome was going to be, didn't she? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she, she took the wrong action first and she realised it and changed direction. Um, uh, but interestingly, the wrong action won't be wasted. That is very true. So what's fueled my fire? You're going to die when you hear this one. You're going to really, <laughs> honestly, it's going to really shock you. Um, I got an email from someone who used to work, I, we used to work with who, again, you know, if, if you did give me a list of the top 20 people you would like to work again with, he'd be very high in the top sort of five or six. And he said, um, any chance for chat? And I had no idea what it was about. And, the, you know, I'm, I'm starting to behave rather uncharacteristically, <laughs> all this going out and having meetings and chats and things. And I said, yeah, sure, because, you know, I liked him and it was cool and I was intrigued. And um, so we had a chat the next day and, and it was quite early in the morning. And he, he, he talked to me a little bit about all the things he'd been up to since the last time. And, and towards the end, he said, um, so what do you think then? Would, would you like to, you know, would you consider working with me on a one to one basis? Now, anyone who knows me recently will know that I've been banging on quite a lot about, you know, one to many or small groups and things like that. But I thought, you know, I would really like to work with this guy. And so I said, so how, how do you see this working? He said, well, I want, you know, I want it to be quick. I want it to be fast and furious. And I'd really like to kick it off with an in-person day. And I, I was like, whoa, OK. <laughs> <I'm not sure laughs> about that. Because like you, I, I think I do my best coaching when I'm 
not visually distracted by the person sitting in front of me. I have just come back from this transformation weekend, as you know, in America. Yeah. And as, yeah. a, as a sort of side effect of that, because my, some of my clients paid for me to go on that because they wanted to know what it was all about as well. And we formed a mastermind group with the with the permission of Rich. He gave me permission to do this. And, and so that I came back and, and went straight into teaching my mastermind group, only a small group of people about, about it. And um, I really enjoyed that. We were back at the Holiday Inn in Gatwick, Judith, where we used to have all our events. Sure. We had dinner the night before and then we spent the whole day masterminding and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So rather un- uncharacteristically, I've I've said yes to this to this chap and he's coming down next week. We've bu- I've booked a room locally. He's taking for dinner afterwards. All the things I don't normally do at all. And I he said, name your price. So I named my price, which you know would make me feel very happy to do all that. And um, he accepted straight away and paid up immediately, which is making me think perhaps I should do some more of this. So it's all fueled my fire to perhaps do more coaching rather than just Internet marketing mentoring. I don't know. How fabulous. How fabulous. Yeah. I'm not sure yet, but I'm feeling the best. I think one doesn't necessarily imply there's a whole stampede of them behind. But I think what's nice is you've got somebody who was prepared to reach out to you. You liked and respected him. He was, you know, you were the two of you found a way to work together. And I think that's quite important. They do say that, you know, the VIP day is a big seller, Nicola. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's you know, I've seen the, the impact. I mean, I've, I've experienced the impact for myself going to America and working with Rich. You know, because I've worked with Rich for, you know, since 2006 virtually. But yes. being in the room with the man was a whole different experience, especially with yeah. Dr. Emery on, on board too. So yeah. that's what's fueled my fire this week. So, Judith, what's our client challenge of the week this week, then? OK, it's something that I'm calling doing things the wrong way round. Oh, yes. Let me explain. Yeah, let me explain what I mean by this. Um, my clients often come in a fog of confusion and they tell me that they they don't want to start on anything until they have clarity and direction and they don't feel sure about anything. So they spend a lot of time procrastinating and looking for certainty. And uh, I think it works precisely the opposite way around, which is you have you have to start in the fog of uncertainty and with lack of clarity and not knowing. And the, the clarity and direction and, and certainty all come when you're in traction, when you're in action, when you're moving. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's quite difficult for me to persuade my clients to do that. Any <laughs> tips, any thoughts? You know, starting, st- let's just start and see what happens. Let's be prepared to experiment, prepared to get egg on our face, prepared to tweak it as we go. What do you say to your people, Nicola? Well, it's interesting with internet marketing, you have to begin with, you have to begin, you have to work backwards. I was talking to Suzanne Jorgensen yesterday and and she's um, putting something new together. And I said, so what you need to do first is the thank you page. And then you work backwards from there. And in fact, in fact, you have to work backwards from the thank you page for the sales page after they bought. You've got to begin with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey would say. Yeah, because each step of Internet marketing relies on something, someone going to something else. And you can't yes. set, up, set up bit three until you've set up bit four. So you actually start with bit six and work backwards. And yeah. and so I said to her, here's the list of what you'll need to do in the right order. And then she said, so what am I doing? I said, well, if you read from six as if it was one, then you'll see what you're going to be doing. <laughs> she took yeah. a while for it. Yeah. The other thing I'm reminded of is um, the th- because, you know, I've, I've recently had to start again. Well, recently, it feels recently, but it wasn't um, 2010. Had to start again. And I was a new word to some degree as well in that fog of uncertainty of what to do next. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm always, I think if we'd have known Steve Jobs's quote of you can only join up the dots in retrospect, then it would have been slightly easier to cope with the fog of uncertainty. Because it's true, absolutely every action takes has an effect on something else and draws you forward to the next dot as it were so if you think about your business success or, or life or career as a series of dots but you can't see where the next dot is but you can only get to the next dot by taking the action on the dot before it yeah i certainly wish i'd known that steve jobs quote yesterday when i was writing the blog post about this i think it, it, it is in a real world business you, you've got an inkling about what you want to do but you're in this 
maybe the, maybe it's to do with the clutter as we were talking about last week but it's it's, it's fog fogginess uncertainty i think it's all sort of fear of this that and the other and and i've got to my job is to get them moving in some direction and to trust that any first steps will lead somewhere i totally agree about joining it that's exactly the point you start with the end in mind uh, i'm telling them it's the wrong way around steve jobs is saying we can only like join up the dots in retrospect that's exactly it it doesn't work the way we want it to work we've got to start yeah and my mentor rich sheffron as you uh, he calls it the entrepreneurial uncertainty and he actually said <coughs> it's one of the most difficult things for people to cope with is yeah. when, they, when they're starting out as an entrepreneur is the fact that they're never going to be certain of things i mean yeah i went to see andy just after we closed the money gym and i said to him you know what shall i do next what you know just tell me what will work and i'll do it and he said well that's not how it works unfortunately. yeah that's right that's, i know yeah, what i do yeah. but you're not about to do it and i said well what is yeah. it i'd go and bang on every high a high street shop and off to make him a website i said no i'm never going to do that he said exactly yeah. so <laughs> what would work for you wouldn't work for me and vice versa yeah yeah, yeah. And, and that is the hardest thing to deal with you have to and it's like you know when i was talking the other week about um sending out those emails throwing digital mud at a wall i i called it I didn't know if it was going to work, but one thing's for sure, and every I remind myself of this every time I'm feeling scared or scarce or, or you know, whatever, uncertain or insecure. If One thing's for certain. If you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, get moving. Momentum. Yes. yes. And I think sometimes um, something small can be incredibly powerful. And I often suggest to my clients that they do something small, and they kind of go as if it's not worth doing. I've got a, a lovely client who's going to make a fabulous coach, much better one than I am because she's a better listener and more soulful. And she uh, is one of the ones in the fog of uncertainty. And she's doing this brilliant thing where every day she takes her dog for a walk, beautiful dog, beautiful countryside. And she takes three or four wonderful photographs and shares them on Facebook. And absolutely everybody loves them. People comment on Facebook, so there's some kind of engagement there. Yeah. Strangers who she meets who've never commented on Facebook uh, say to her in the flesh, oh, I really love those photographs you're putting up on Facebook. And it's just a talking point. It's the beginning of engagement with a community, who some of whom will eventually sign up and pay her money to be her clients. And it looks like such a small thing. I'm walking the dog. I'm taking a beautiful photograph, but the, for the photograph, see, I couldn't take a beautiful photograph. So the <laughs> photograph already, no, <laughs> well, it already demonstrates that she can see things. She's got an eye. She's quite artistic. Uh, and, you know, her whole thing is her whole ethos is about love. There's love in these photographs. They're lovingly shared. She can't. You see, that sounds small, but it's massive. Do you get that? It is. And, and one of the things that I always say, if you can, I mean, you know, we, we've got the habit of action and momentum now. And I but I always say to my clients, you know, it's, it seems to be all or nothing thinking. Yeah, it's black yeah. and white, all or nothing. thinking. So it's, yes, A or Z. Yeah, exactly. I always remind them that between A and Z, there's B, C, D, E, F, G, yeah. H, I, J. Yes. And, and the other thing, the other story I always tell is about my first ever car, which was a gold Nissan Micra, I think. And it was didn't have any power steering. And oh, it, Nicola, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to talk right. to yourself. My doorbell's ringing. OK, well, I'll tell everyone else about my Nissan Micra then. Um, what happened was it didn't have any power steering and it was an absolute beast to park. But the thing I found very quickly was it was always much more easy to um, direct and park and, and, you know, change direction. What if it was moving even a tiny, tiny, slow bit? It, it made it much easier to change to, to you know to pull the wheel and to get the angles you needed to park so um th this is the point is if if you're moving even no matter how slowly or no matter how hesitantly it's so much easier to change direction if you need to when you're in motion so the trick is to just get in motion and trust that if you do need to change direction it'll be much much easier if you don't need to change direction fantastic you can just carry on down the motorway so I think with Judith's abrupt departure, we'll bring to an end that client challenge. I think we've covered that one quite nicely. So uh, we'll move on to the next section. But first, a word from our sponsors. This week's episode was sponsored by Audio Jungle. To get some immediate atmosphere for your website or your recordings, go to ownitthepodcast.com forward slash audio jungle. So my word of the week this week, Nicola, is Christmas. The C word. Uh, 
Yeah, the C word. I'm a, 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 a serial hater of Christmas. I'm 59. And I've hated it since I was about 15. So that's quite a long time. Uh, I don't look forward to it. I'm a right Grinch and a bar humbug about it. Uh, frankly, my gift to myself would be to stay at home by myself, but that's not really allowed. Um, and yet, why not? But this year I've changed my mind. Uh, flushed with success from something I did about changing my mind about when the clocks go back and then deciding not to buy into all that misery about how dark it is at three o'clock in the afternoon. This year I decided to like Christmas. Uh, it's a deliberate choice. It's learned behaviour. I'm not there yet. I can slink back into Grinch very easily. But <laughs> nice things have happened since I decided to like Christmas. Uh, my brother and his family have invited me out to a service of carols in uh, Southwark Cathedral in London, which is a beautiful cathedral on London Bridge and out for dinner in Borough Market afterwards, which is deeply trendy. Um, and just nice things have been happening since I decided, just decided to take the pressure off it and stop being such an old curmudgeon, really. Uh, and I think the point of this is not Christmas so much as just changing a mind about stuff that you've, you're just sick and tired of boring yourself with it for decades. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Does, does the word Christmas have meaning attached to it for you, Judith, that, that comes from feelings that arise from events that happened previously in your life? Yes. Yeah. My mother didn't like it. Um, my yeah, it does. It goes decades of misery and family rowing, really. And, and, and it's not it's not really that my family are difficult. They're no different than anybody else's family. It's just I think it presents a lot of special challenges. For, I think that it, at the root of it is we all want to believe at Christmas time that we belong to the ideal family and we don't and that's disappointing oh yeah and that ideal family probably isn't out there anywhere but we're no. all suffering under that illusion <laughs> yeah it's not but i think you could change your mind about it so for instance instead of being a curmudgeon and saying you know what i'd really like to do is be at home by myself in peace and quiet is saying i'm very very grateful that i've got a loving family who really want me to be with them so i'm going to go and be with them that's my gift to them this christmas rather than being selfish and having a 365th day to myself i will give my day to somebody else and, you know, maybe that's precisely what Christmas is about when you're old. I don't need any more stuff. I'm not old, but you know what I mean? When you're older, um, maybe it's about uh, actions rather than presents. Yes, I've realised that the last few years have been about accepting change for me because obviously, you know, Phoebes and Nels are, I loved Christmas when they were young because it gave me an opportunity to dive back into it and make make their Christmases nicer than mine ever ever seemed to have been. So I, I love that. But they're, they're growing up now and um, they're, they're wonderful, wonderful people and they do want to spend Christmas Day with me. But it's now diffi more difficult because there's none of that magic, you know, pretending know. Santa Claus and things like I that. I think that's it, yes. I mean, I, I've said in a blog, and I'm sure you've read it, you know, that when I'm great Aunt Judith as opposed to just Aunt, Aunt Judith, i.e. when the Morgans have little people again who believe in Santa, then the magic returns. It's all about the belief in Santa. Once they get to eight or ten, you know, <laughs> you're, really, you're really spending Christmas with a bunch of cynical adults who are looking forward to a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, the other thing that Christmas does for me, it brings up, well, you know, the, the echo of scarcity feelings because yeah. you know I went I went through so many years you know not dreading the, the c word would actually put physical financial dread into me because yeah. you know it's a big expenditure especially when you've got a family so you know I've, I'm, I've had to learn to to overcome that but yeah. it's funny because you know the kids coming to me um they don't necessarily Nelson said to me the other day oh do we really have to have turkey you know, it's like <laughs> But if we don't have turkey, it won't feel like Christmas. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, I suppose so. And then, then the, in the evening, they've got this this habit of saying, "Oh, can a few of our friends pop round, Mum?" Because every, you know, I'm in the centre of town, and and, every, and everyone knows I love lots of teens around. But then it'll turn into a right old knees up, and who knows where it'll go from there? <laughs> so so well, that doesn't sound too bad either, actually, Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you know, that's a good example. If other teenagers want to come to your house, then you're doing something right. Well, they always want to come to my house because you know I just I just love their company. I really do. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So so yes, it's a, for me. It's about adjusting my learned associations with the word and trying to create a new Christmas going forward. Yeah, and just changing our minds and um, and being open. I think to it taking a different format. I'm with Nelson. Let's not have turkey. For me, I like to cook, but there are certain things that I like. I know I can cook well. <laughs> Turkey's, yeah. one of them. Turkey's one of them. Fair enough. <laughs> Apart from the year the knob dropped off the oven, in which case I had no, no idea what temperature it was and how long it had been for. <laughs> 
But having said that, that was always better than my mother's. Um, I would say heights or depths. I'm not sure where she actually cooked the turkey with a tea towel inside it. It was dry as a bone. (laughs) Oh, that sounds terrible. Well, my word of the week, Judith, is energy. And I... I don't know why I wrote it down, really, because I'm I'm feeling all weird about it now. I'm looking at it <laughs> because <laughs> because I'm noticing that I don't have so much energy as I used to. I used to think of myself as an unstoppable machine, and I remember that. Um, and I hope you don't mind me bringing this up that you are slightly older than me. <laughs> so <laughs> I remember when we were working together in the money gym. You used to talk about the you know your energy levels and things, and you were you were much more careful to conserve your energy than I was in those days. But I'm feeling more like you now that oh. I need to conserve my energy and I need to be aware of my energy levels and what what drains them and what feet you know what fills them up again. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's interesting because I came back from the Inspire thing and I felt completely. You know how I used to come back from speaking gigs and be completely. It was almost like jet lag for a couple of days. Yes. Well, I came back from that one and I felt completely wonderful and inspired and uplifted. So that was an interesting experience. Yeah, maybe, maybe the trick is not to do them as often as we used to. Yeah. But I, I think generally I'm just becoming more aware of my own energy levels and, and what, you know, what 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 supports that. But you've yeah. all been much more in touch with that sort of thing, haven't you? Well, I, I think you're. I think it is to do with age. You're right, actually. I mean, I think I'm. I don't know, five years older than you, or something yeah, like that. So it, it, that's why I said. Quite a lot of <laughs> quite a lot of my friends and colleagues are younger than me, and so it's quite difficult to be the person who's always ahead. I'm the first born, so you know, I went through everything before my brother did. You, you, you're always the pioneer. You're always learning this stuff, and you don't choose to have less energy. You just realise in your fifties you can't do as much as you used to, so you have to prioritise prioritize using your energy which is your most vital resource on things that really deserve it yeah and I think we're very very lucky because we can choose to spend our days I mean I went to when I went to London a couple of weeks ago I came back on you know Friday night and I had to stand up all the way home and I remember when I used to commute and you know it was two hours door to door from Worthing to the West End each way twice a day you know and um it, I, I just took it completely in my stride, but I stood on this train standing up all the way from Victoria to Shoreham by Sea, and I thought, I don't know how these people do this every day. I really yeah. don't, it, and we're very lucky to be able to spend our time doing what we want to. And, and I think it, I think it's about our life force, and I think what happens when you get older actually is not that you not so much that you can't do as much as you used to. You just get more uh, careful about what you, you want to use that life force on. And standing up in a train, a commuter train, would not be one of them, Nicola. No, <laughs> it wouldn't. And I don't intend to do it again in the near future. <laughs> Who or what have you been impressed with this week, Judith? It's another one of my clients, Nicola, I'm afraid. Her name That's is Andrea. Andrea. She lives in <laughs> she lives in New she lives in New Zealand and it's the it's it's the exactly opposite story of the one I told you last week because Andrea's taken about a year. And what she's done is she's allowed her niche to find her. And that's oh. quite a difficult thing to do. Yeah. She um, she has been a lawyer in London and travelled the world a lot. And I could see from the very first call that we had how she could be of, of service to a tribe, but she couldn't see it. And what she's done is she took about four or five months to go traveling in the Far East. It's the Far East from England, but it, it's probably the Near East from, from New yeah. Zealand. Around so she's been in you know, Cambodia and Thailand and all that kind of thing. And she's been volunteering in a, in a dog's uh, charity shelter where she's been doing quite a lot of hard work in, in, in 30 degree temperatures, volunteering. But she's also, not, as well as um, a, a lawyer and a dancer, uh, she's been learning how to create her own website and you know, blog. But in the dog's shelter, she uh, took some beautiful photographs because she's an excellent photographer and she's learning photography. And she persuaded the the shelter to allow her to create a, a 2015 calendar using the beautiful photographs of the dogs that she'd taken. And this was all in the sort of hobby sector, the traveling the world sector. And we didn't know how it was going to lead to anything, but it led to her mastering. She's a mechanic profile, so it led to her mastering all sorts of things that I would have given up on, like 
uh, a shop via cafe press in every country in the world which means you've got Whoa. to upload all the photographs of the dogs and work with different shopping carts and god knows what yeah. but, but after 12 months of traveling and uh, navel gazing and allowing and trusting and struggling and so forth she returned to new zealand and she knew straight away she didn't want to settle back into her old life not even i mean i knew she wasn't going to get a job but she didn't want to settle and get comfortable she wanted to be uncomfortable and she wrote a, a, a blog post a guest blog post for a website you probably know called tiny buddha they featured her on their first page which gave her a lot of new opt-ins and sign-ups at her website which led to clarity and she just finally got all her oh, there's the s word again finally got all her shit together in 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 like a sort of three week period after maybe a year and just suddenly it just all came together in the way that I could always see and that she couldn't and it was like oh it's all clear now and funny enough when it all comes together in a rush like that isn't it the guest post and look at my I've cracked my you know um, my calendar offering and I've got my website sorted out and I know who I am now and I've, I've done I've rewritten my home page and my packages and all that it just kind of sometimes you see clients where they have this rush of success in three weeks and everybody else goes oh it's not fair they're having success in three weeks no it took this woman a year and it just <laughs> all comes together in the end and it looks impressive and it is impressive but what's really impressive is not the three weeks it's the 49 weeks that went before. So this week, my inspiration is Andrea. The overnight success syndrome. Though. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to throw a right old curveball in here. I'm going to tell you about Gogglebox. Which... Oh, right. Never, never seen it, but I know what it is. Well, I absolutely love it. I'm When I finish work in the evening, I like nothing better than to go and watch a bit of um, television. And I, I usually stick to really positive TV. I watch the odd bit of Kardashians because Phoebe likes it. And I've got in, quite into it as well. And I've got a lot of respect for the Kardashians. So don't say anything about them. <laughs> they work their asses off. But Gogglebox is marvellous. And I, I've actually um, mentioned it a few times to some of my clients. And some of the more intelligent ones are watching it now as well. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> It's it's a program where they film people watching television, and I was think I was watching it, and and it's right across the board. You've got chess masters, you've got a gay couple in Brighton, you've got families. I mean, there was one family that have got more dogs than I've ever seen in one house in my life. It's like the, the dogs are Rottweilers too, and they're swarming all over the, <laughs> this tiny living room. Then you've got a posh couple who run a posh B and B somewhere who are hilarious because they're always a bit half cut. And um, but it's almost more enjoyable, I've realised, watching them watching the television programmes that I like to watch than it is watching the television programmes that I like to watch. <laughs> seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of mentions of it on Facebook and oh, I know people do enjoy it a lot. It's one. It's starting to win awards now because it is just so I, I, the reason I'm so impressed with it is because it's so life affirming. It's heartwarming. It's it's actually really there's a lot of um, different ethnic mixes in there you've got you know you've got um a, a muslim guy with his two sons and sometimes one of the sons brings his little daughter because he's on babysitting duty you know but it, they talk about quite serious issues in this you know as they're watching things like news light and question time and, and the news and all that business and i just find it very life affirming that that these people are out there living their lives being intelligent having common sense and being down to earth about things you know sometimes you get a bit of a picture that everyone's all ranting and homophobe and xenophobe and, and you know anti-immigration and all that stuff but when you watch this program I think it just brings home lots of lovely heartwarming things so I can't recommend it highly enough I think you'll love it I, I have been tempted by it, I must say, and I totally agree with your the, the gist of the message of what you're saying there, which is quite a lot of programmes are life affirming in strange and unexpected ways. Yeah, totally enjoy it. Gogglebox, just check it out. Lovely. You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. Gotta do it.